In a studio that's in a basement comes the epic story of how two friends changed the future of the movie podcast game forever. <laughs> the reviews are in. Boys Life Magazine gives the High Sci Podcast four and a half acorns. The Daily Bugle says, these guys are super legit. And Pope Francis declares the podcast as life affirming. From the kid who tried to get smart with David Spade and got fucking old. You're still at. You're still back. And the guy who can name all four Baldwin brothers. Alec, William, Daniel, and the baby boy, Stephen. Live from the studio of his parents' basement. The Have You Seen It Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Have You Seen It Podcast. My name is Mason Knight. Sitting across from me is the one and only Cash Krause. But before we jump into this review, guys, please be sure to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification as we drop videos here every single day. It really does help us grow the channel, guys. So if you could do that, that would be great. All right, bringing in Cash Kraus. I'm here. I'm ready. Uh, yeah, how's how was your weekend, Mason? Well, uh, the weekend was great. We yeah. did a fight companion. We got we to watch did. the fights. That was a lot of fun on the Church of MMA podcast. Uh, but you know, uh, an eventful morning for me. I heard. I heard about that. Did you hear about that? Yeah. I, I do have two puppies, as I'm sure you guys know. I've made a, a community post back in the day. Well, I woke up to a bunch of diarrhea. That will happen. Yeah. All over the place. And I'm not just talking in the kennel. I'm talking about Explosive. on the walls. and It was exploding diarrhea. Uh, it took me, took me and my fiance about an hour and a half to clean up, shampoo the carpets, and this wash is a, down the a walls. And this is a daily thing you go through. Well, yeah. it's happened three or four <laughs> times now. We've taken them yeah. to the vet a couple times. And now we got to get some poo samples to the vet again. So uh, this is fun. I'm enjoying life. Puppies are fun. This they are fun. Is, this is Mason's recommendation to get more puppies. Get more puppies. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you cannot go wrong with more puppies. You will clean up more diarrhea. Yeah. Inevitable. Well, my my uh, my weekend was good. Like you said, we got to watch the fights. But uh, I watched some fucking stuff. Stinkers. Before we get into our review, okay, I watched some stinkers this week. You gotta let me know. Oh yeah, baby, two new films. It, it made me. This is so rare that I go in and just randomly, you know, just watch two two films that I really have no interest in watching. Okay, but uh, it made me feel like in the high school days when I would go and stay at my friend's house and his dad would just randomly pick movies from a red box. Mm -hmm. Like you'd get one movie that was like had like decent actors, then one just total B, and ninety nine percent of the time, shit. Yeah, always suck. Right. So I watched two films this week. I watched Monster Hunter with Mila Djokovic. The, Awful, huh? <laughs> very surprising. I thought that one would be the, good. the film based on a video game. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very surprising. Yeah. Uh, sucked ass. Oh my. That's god. That's weird too because like the horrible track record effects Hor with video games to movies oh, is always so really bad. good. So it's so bad. Yeah. This is one surprising. of them. It's one of them that's right up in there. Yeah. And then I watched another one, The New Wrong Turn. Which was no. horrible. Was it was it? so, so bad. It had almost nothing to do with the original. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was so, That's so bad. So I, I just had a, a fun weekend of yeah. uh, watching these horrible shit. I, I did drink, though. So I was, yeah, I was, so that helps. It definitely helps did help. But man, were these some f bad, bad movies. Yeah. The landscape right now for new films coming out. Not great. <laughs> it's barren. <laughs> But it you was know, great to watch this film that we're reviewing because that absolutely. this film is so damn good. It cleanses your palate of any other shitty films you may have watched this weekend. And I will start by saying this: this is one of the most criminally underrated yes. comic book films. Well, we talk about I've it ever seen criminally underrated films. Period. Yeah, that we we bring this film up though. If if fans of the show that listen a lot will know that we bring this film up quite a bit. We do. We're finally getting around to reviewing it, though. 2012's Dread. Starring Carl Urban himself as <laughs> also Judge Also the most underrated actor. Absolutely. Just so good in everything. Well, he's well, he's starting to get a name for himself now. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but now, well, yeah. he was in Lord of the Rings. Right, I He was know. in Star Trek. <laughs> yes. He was in, he's in a lot of great the things. The biggest franchises, and this guy still just seems to me just not give the credit he deserves. Mm-hmm. No matter what performance he's in, he's one of those guys who just loves it and gives 100% every right. single time. And he fucking loved playing Dread in this. 
Uh, and never, he took it very seriously. Never offset. broke character and never took his helmet off no. while shooting, even off scenes. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a famous story. He's pre-Mandalorian. Yeah. Before yeah, pre he was doing it cool before That's anyone true. else was. That is true. Uh, but yeah, there were, there were even uh, stories on set of this cast member or whatever made a joke, made the whole set laugh, and he just he looked laugh. over and gave him a snarl like, hey, yeah. you need to cut that shit out. Right. And the guy instantly <laughs> apologized. And uh, Dread, of course, is based off of the comic book that came out of the 70s, a uh, very popular comic book from London. Uh, I haven't read a lot of it, but it's I'll tell you, it's in the future, and there's mm -hmm. these new wave of lawmen who are uh, judge, jury, and executioner. That is absolutely true. And there's only six mega states. Six mega states, and and within these mega states are mega cities. Yes, which are these ma not just like these regular. They have these massive apartment complexes that are the size of a city block. Right. There's cities within cities in mm -hmm. these apartment complexes, and there's 800 million people. Who live within yeah. some of the abandoned? Buildings. And I love the the cool like '80s intro where it's the narrator where like the year was <laughs> yeah <laughs> you chaos have that. chaos yeah. ruled the streets yeah. and the only preventable force was the judges and then it's these judges who are they pretty much they uh, they bring down justice right there on the spot. It's quicker than ever. Yeah, they, uh, no they make their judgment very fast. That's for sure. <laughs> and you better hope to God that guy's not having a bad day. Oh, yeah. You know, to give cops that, that. amount of power <laughs> would be a scary proposition. I don't know yeah, if I would well, approve so, that the, one. These don't days, think I'd vote yes on that. On that uh, well, you got to be desperate. You do. This is when the mega Absolutely. cities are taking there. But yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. Like I said, based on comic books, there's also a 1995 movie that uh, I loved as a kid. It's not very good at all. Starring Sylvester Stallone as Judge Dredd. Yeah, 1995. And Rob Schneider's in it, which yeah. is awesome. Friend of the show. Friend of the, Friend show. the show. Actually, we, yeah, let's we try it. Yeah. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, Rob Schneider. Uh, but yeah, that one's fun. Very campy. Not nearly as serious and grounded as this one. Right. This this movie is like training day set in the future. Mm -hmm. It's just one day of uh of the life of a judge and it's fucking awesome. It's written by Alex Garland, who at the time little unknown, just did screenplay. There's a weird story that everyone pretty much says he directed this film, although he did not get credit for it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of goes into why this film did not do so well. But uh he's awesome, of course. He's directed nowadays he directs Great fucking sci-fi, Ex Machina, Annihilation, one of my favorite sci-fi films of all time. These are all time. just average, middle-of-the-road <laughs> sci-fi films. No, they're fucking, they're, they're amazing, awesome. and they're he's amazing. Films. He's one of the greatest, uh, up. well, I don't want to say up-and-coming, because he's already here, but he's yeah, one yeah. of the greatest, more relevant directors today. He's fucking awesome, and you could tell he loved this film, and he wrote it in such a beautiful way that he definitely, definitely was a fan of the series. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Just and and I want to talk about the experimental uh, cinematography that I absolutely yeah. fell in love with. Uh, what are you talking about? Slow-mo. The slow-mo. Yeah, but the, the way they executed it and the fact that like when you take the slow-mo drug, colors become more vibrant. Everything slows yeah. down. 1% of your brain. And right, we, get that, we get that pre-Alex Garland that he used a lot in there, but it's that rainbow color yes. of, that makes it everything feel otherworldly. And the same thing, Annihilation, where you got that reflection yeah. of, of everything. And Common made, theme, if you look clo closely in this film. Yeah, but now, now it's you. Everyone's fucking of using course. that. <laughs> Everyone right? uses that. Do what works, right? Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, everyone's using that now. But yeah, the slow mo. It's such a wonderful plot device to where it's not just scenes slowed down for just the sense of slowing down to look cool. It's uh, it's a reason why it's happening. Absolutely. There's this new drug that uh, it pretty much, when you take it, it's everything feels like it's slowing down for you. And they say your brain processes things at 1% the normal speed. Right. So it so just that's, seems like everything. And it's so, it's, it's so cool to visualize and look because it looks, it's showing you what it looks like to be on like hallucinogenic drugs. Right. <laughs> and they do a really good job of it. They, they do a fantastic job. But brutal brutal because most of the time these people are taking the slow-mo right before the death and well, right it, and it before leads to like thrown off a 10 year building. long death that mm -hmm. you're, that's for sure because you're experiencing it very very slow every you experience everything slow yeah but uh 
yeah, it's an awesome drug. The entire city is, is so fleshed out. That's another thing is the world building is fantastic. Everything feels like it's been there for a very, very mm-hmm. long time, especially the start. I love the intro when it's introducing Judge when he's chasing the three guys in the van. Yeah. And they're pumping the slow mo and everything, but it's well, and he it wasn't starts off execute them until and then he radios in. He goes, "They killed an innocent. I'm going to take them down." And this film is so br- it just feels so out of place in 2012. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so, and that's another reason why I don't think it did so well because in 2012 there were so many comic book movies coming out. That were 2012. Remember, we had the first Avengers. Mm-hmm. We had the first Amazing Spider Man. Mm-hmm. We had. Uh, there was Men in Black that came out, uh, the Hunger Games. That was one of the big. All these for the Avengers broke a, a bunch of Skyfall came out, mm-hmm. so it was just this landscape. It was oh the the Last Dark Knight. Yep. So it was all these giant films. It, it was such a tough landscape to come out with yes. a film like this. And I think why this didn't stand out too is because of the gore, because it was rated R. Exactly. This was yeah. ahead of its time. You got to keep yes. in mind this is before Deadpool. This there was no R-rated Logan. superhero films. Yeah, there was never one. And, and this one executed it to, almost to perfection, I have yeah. to say. I, I, I got to talk about the slow-mo, too. In the execution scenes, the way these guys were getting shot in the face is so like true to actually being shot where your skin splits open. Well, the, it's not yeah. a pretty little hole. The way they did, fucking explodes. The way they did the slow-mo, they... Uh, it took years and years to uh, perfect it. Mm-hmm. Alex Garland started doing it, like, in 2009 when he was on another film, but they took it took years for them to show, because they didn't want to use it, and it's so smart, and we talk about this all the time, but they didn't want to use it in a way where if it lingers too long, it'd be distracting to the film goer. Right. So they had to build a process that would be just the perfect, they had to time it just the perfect amount to where you're not getting distracted from the story. So mm-hmm. it's just the perfect little bit, and it's not used a ton. Oh. We've talked about it mostly the entire time of this podcast, mm-hmm. but it's not used a ton. It's no. used very, it's not used very liberally at all. No, it's, it's used in the right places. Sparse, yeah. And the thing is, is when that slow-mo is initiated, as you said, it's about 10, maybe yeah. 10 seconds or so, and then we're back to normal speed. But that's that's all practical effects. That's high-speed camera. That was a camera shooting 4,000 frames per second. And when they used, you know, the waves of the scan, yeah. It's a high pressure air cannon that mm. they use to ripple, and but yeah. then they'd shoot it all in slow motion. And Alex Garland got the idea from watching uh, nature documentaries. You know, when like a big great white jumps out and it goes right. in slow mo. He said, "Yeah, why don't use that in a fucking film?" And it's perfect, like you said. It's it's used per it's used at that start when we first get him, and what talked about the blood and brutality is we get that right at the start when that guy hits his head on the fucking windshield and his head mm-hmm. explodes. Yeah. Right then you're like, Oh fuck, this isn't a regular, uh, superhero film. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is a lesser known superhero too. Not a lot of people knew before this film who judge dread was, unless you're a fan of the comics, yeah. which not a lot. I mean, there's, it's not as big as a Spider-Man or a fucking no, Batman. Not close. No. And the studio knew that. So they didn't put any money into marketing at all. It fucking killed this film. No one, no one went and saw this film. And it's so sad because this this is one of my favorite superhero films of all time. All the films I named, uh, The Avengers, Skyfall, Dark Knight, The Hobbit, Ice Age. These are their top ten films. Twilight. Uh, oh, God. Madagascar, Amazing Spider-Man, Hunger Games, Men Black. Those are the top ten grossing films of 2012. Dread is by far my favorite film out of all yep. those. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's not even cool. maybe Skyfall, but I just Dread is my favorite of all of those. Yeah. Dread should have made a billion dollars. Should have. <laughs> it, it, it really should have because I mean, yeah. and and it sucks too. It sucks that this film did not make a billion dollars because. As you just brought up, this whole film takes place within a day. There is so much more to explore with this ju- uh, Judge yeah. Dredd character that we could go into in a sequel or go into for a trilogy that I would love to see. The way this film was so brilliantly executed, yeah. I could see another two movies, no problem, and have uh, Alex Gar- Garland uh, direct it. Exactly. Well, and that's that's exactly what Alex Garland thought, too. Alex Garland had three different ideas for this film, but he said the other two ideas, were they were just too Big, and that's what something the the ninety film the nineteen ninety film did. It was just too the whole scope of everything. It was like Sylvester Stallone against this 
giant entity that was going to destroy this. Every time it's something so grand. and doesn't and need he, to be that big. No, and that's what Alex Garland, he said he had two other drafts that he wrote, because he rewrote this film like 40 times or something, but he had two other drafts they said they were just, the, the stakes were too big. It was too unbelievable unless you knew the dread world. So he said right. this, and like I said, it's like training day, but in the future, it's just one single day. And it's super grounded. It's, but yeah, like it's the perfect, it's the perfect uh, starter course, like into the dread universe. After you watch it, you just want to see more. Yeah. You know, you want to see more of this world and more, of, but Everything I've heard is we're never going to get a sequel. Well, every, everything that we saw, too, is really cool. I love the, uh, and I don't know the actual name because I've never read the comic books of Dread, but the the bikes, the motorbikes that they ride on, which Carl Urban actually, uh, th those are actually real bikes that they built. So it's the Law Master, I yeah, believe. Yeah, something like that. Because yeah. the gun is called the Law Giver, mm -hmm. and I, th I believe the the bike is called the Law Master. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks, it, it does, it, it's a little more practical than in the comic books because I heard if they... They tried building like a one to one version of the comic, and you couldn't drive it. It just didn't drive the It was just, but this one, like you said, yeah, he, Carl Urban insisted on driving the bike, and f dude, I would be the same way. I'm like, when am I ever gonna Hell, get? Yeah. When am I gonna get? Gonna, <laughs> yeah, never gonna be able to ride this bike ever in my life, ever again. Yeah. I'm not getting this a stunt double for this. Yeah, this giant bike yeah. with giant metal fifty uh, cal guns on this. It's so fucking cool. Oh, for sure. It's so awesome. There's no way they're not. I'm, I'm taking that bike home after shooting, too. Uh, yeah. It's my day-to-day -day bike. Hey, look, I'm going to add this into my, yeah, my contract. <laughs> I'm taking this to the office. But, yeah, everything looks so cool. And the whole design, the helmet and how mm -hmm. it's meant to be the law, the, 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 the faceless or the justice supposed to have no face. So that's mm -hmm. why they keep the mask on constantly. Yeah. And it looks fucking cool. It does look cool. And he's doing this whole Clinton Eastwood because Dread is kind of like a combination of Clint Eastwood characters. And that's definitely what you get. He's, he's like that growly, gritty mm -hmm. that Carl Urban, I guess, kept for the entire thing. Yeah, it, do yeah, it doesn't show a lot <laughs> of emotion. Nothing. You know, it doesn't. And it's, and it's not this big thing either where he goes through this massive growth within the film. There is, and it, with, within the comic books too, he hardly, in the 50 years the comic books around, he hardly fucking changes. Yeah. He doesn't get like a kid and a family and everything. But there's there isn't like this massive growth where he's like hugging the rookie at the end or anything. Nope. He moves maybe an inch in indifference towards the start. Maybe. <laughs> towards the start and then. Yeah. But there's there is just enough growth. There's mm -hmm. not enough where it's unbelievable, but it's just enough to where, you know, things are still moving. Because you've got to have that like, character growth. Right. And not only that, too, but it's just like the w the finale of this film when everything's, you know, when the climax is over and they're walking out. Like you look at that and you're like, oh, that was just another day as a judge. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting other judges. Yeah. So when you say like yeah. you move an inch, like that's really how it felt. Like it was just like, oh, okay, that yeah, was another you, day. You really the do. The rookie pass. Exactly. You really do feel like he's just going to hop on his bike and be like, I got to be in at eight o'clock tomorrow. Right. I got to go. I gotta Even though I just got shot. Yeah. You know? Even though I had to kill a lot of my own fucking guys. But uh, let's, gotta... let's talk about the casting. Can we talk about okay, the casting yes, for a second? Okay, yes, that's where I was going. So phenomenal. Cersei? Obviously, we talked about Carl Urban as Dread. Uh, mm -hmm. Olivia Thurby is great as the rookie. She's only ever named her regular name thing twice in the film. Yeah. But he calls her the rookie the whole time. Uh, but the great yes. just. There is Lannister herself. Yeah, there is like a uh, Leon Hetty. There is like a debate going on right now within like the filming community and the writing community about there's no good, there's no pure women villains. Mm. No, I mean, there's very little. I'm talking about pure, not not women that have like are turned into villains, but women that are just pure evil in film. There's a lot of villain men that are just pure evil, but there's no, there's very few pure villain women. You don't think, you don't think this mama was pure evil? No, I'm saying this, she's the one, one of the only. Oh, ones. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. She's right. one of the only characters in film that it's just, normally it's a story where the, the woman, cause mm. something tragic happened. happened. Turned, yeah. There is very little, and it's an injustice to women. Yeah. And, and this, this was sparked because of the whole Corella thing and how. Right. Corella was just a straight up evil person, but now they're going to make it to where something tragic happened to her, to where she becomes. There's just no pure Hans Gruber or anyone. Yeah. But this is a perfect, she's one of the greatest, uh, just villains, period. 
but just one of the very few just pure evil women characters. And we need a lot more of them. We do. Because I want to see Leon Hetty in everything. Mama is such... She's. I think she's topped in my villains of all time. She's oh, absolutely. So fucking, she's so good She's at right it. up there to me with like a nurse ratchet. Mm-hmm. Who, That's a great comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Who you got. It was. It also seems to be like debatable, but to a lot of people, it's just pure, pure evil. evil. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of those. Yeah. There needs to be more women that are just straight up villains. They well, don't need was, You don't have to make this tragedy. Some women, if you can believe it, are evil. Just right. like some men are ne- Are evil, <laughs> right. So let's yeah. portray that in film. Yeah. And let's not cater to anything specifically, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's yeah, there's very few. I mean, you can go throughout. And, and Cersei is, is, but still Cersei is one of those where she had tragedy throughout her life, too. Yeah, she did. So there's, there's, there's very few of those characters. And not a, a lot of people could bring up examples I saw but this is just a perfect well and they didn't fear doing that either in this film and they made it very transparent to you that mama was pure evil yeah 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 Yeah. so something that 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 blows my mind about this is the budget was anywhere between 30 to 45 million yeah they and this is such a tragedy here you want to talk about tragedy they did not yeah they did not box office 41.5 million that's it yes that's it well, stu- it's the completely the studio's fault. You know, yeah. they you can't uh, you can't go in limp. You got to be in it or out of it. I mean, it's got to be if you're gonna do a movie, do it like you do every film. Yes, and, and produce. And it's the marketing that killed this film. And the director, uh, Pete, quote unquote, the Pete director, Travis. Pete Travis, yeah. he refused to talk about this film when they got done. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like what you can't be ashamed of a film like this. I mean, no, it was it's a really great film. It's cuz every everyone it's really hard to get cuz it's really hard to get a full story about it and I've looked into it many times, but uh everyone says that Alex Garland pretty much directed the entire thing cuz him and uh Pete Travers or that's his name. Yeah, right? Pete, Pete Travis. Travis. They had so many uh disagreements about the story. That eventually Pete Travis was like fuck it, you know, do do whatever you want. I mean, just go and really, and then, so Alex Garner had to pick up, yeah, which is so shitty for who was because Alex Garner is producer on it. I'm yes, sure there wouldn't is. be that, but him and his friends are producing it. Mm-hmm. So in the end, they just it was this big, and they tried to get Alex Garner a co director, and then it didn't end up happening a, a co director credit, and it didn't end up happening. But everyone pretty much says this is Alex Garland's first directorial film. Yeah. But it's so shitty for the director to do that. Yeah, for sure. And look at the guy's filmography. Has not done anything since. <laughs> he's directed some television episodes. Has not worked. In... Maybe he's got a bad attitude. Oh, I got, I got good. I fucked that no. guy. I mean, that that should ruin. And now I look at understand. now look at Alex Garland. Yeah, exactly. See where he's at. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they should just give Alex Garland the reins in the first place. But he had never directed anything. So, right. but fuck, you can tell this had Alex Garland's fingerprints all over it. Oh yeah, you know, it doesn't, especially doesn't now feel like a Pete hindsight. Travis film. Yeah, if it, it feels like an Alex Garland film for sure. But uh, yeah, and uh, Donald Gleason is also in this yes. as uh, before he really blew up, and now that he's in everything, but he plays her uh, her tech guy with the, and she's got a weird relationship with him. Man, yeah, I that did guy feel is for so the guy a little scary. bit. Yeah, <laughs> so she fucking... plucked his damn eyeballs out, was threatening him with a knife the whole time. The whole time she's just. So, oh. Good, I'm telling you, just the best villain. Fear. I know, that's for sure. The best villain really made you scared. There's so many cool action scenes, too, we can, we can kind of dive into. The the minigun is maybe the only movie where I felt like the power of a minigun oh, should be. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> well, and not only that, too, but we talk about Mama's so character So loud, a lot, so deafening, yeah. Being pure evil. There are women, children, family in these oh, apartment complexes. Everyone. She doesn't care. It obliterates everyone in sight just yeah. to kill this judge. And that's the thing, is she doesn't only have... A hate for men or, or something. She's only protecting women. She, she, she again, period. She'll kill anyone. She'll kill anyone. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But to get what she But when wants. she hops on that fucking minigun, like, let, let me try. Let me try this. This does look And then the whole fucking building looks like it might collapse. I know. Barely gets that, but that's such a cool action sequence. And then he shoots the flare thing over and it burns everyone alive. Brutal. It is brutal. This is a very brutal film. And, too, the fact that they they showed bits and pieces, too, of people actually getting skinned alive. Oh, the start. That is a fucking horrible way and to go. we talk about it all the time. When you got a villain, you got to immediately set that bar. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the bar was set. The early bar was set, on. yeah. Skin them and throw them over and give them slow-mo. Slow-mo. 
So it's like they're driving for years. But I I do have to say, would you rather have slow mo or no slow mo if you're getting thrown off a building? Well, I think I think I'd almost rather take the slow. I don't know because think how much time you're thinking about like, oh, I'm fucking dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. You're freaking out. I'd rather be quick because most of the time you drop, drop like that, you don't even realize until you you already hit the ground. But I don't think I'd want to like have thirty seconds to think about my drop and how excruciatingly painful this is going to oh, be. Oh, it won't be painful. It, you'll be lights out right away. Your skull will be smashed. But, yeah, well, when you're in a tower like that, or... hopefully, yeah. But when you're skinned alive and you're and you're in slow mo, okay, good. You're point. probably like, I'm ah. on fire. <laughs> my skin hurts. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I forgot about. And then the, the air, the air coming up, going through your skin. It's just. Oh yeah, that is true. Okay, yeah. I don't want no slow mo. <laughs> Throw me off the fucking. I don't roof. think in any instance slow mo as a death is a good thing. Probably not. The drug sounds fucking cool. It sounds fun. It does sound fun. But maybe uh, play ping pong when you well, take. I don't see any. It's like a yeah. I don't see anything where you could do something because you're it's you, just you. Everything else is still in rare, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's just you going really slow. That's why I was thinking when those guys were running from him at the start and they're taking mm-hmm. some. I'm like, this is only going to hurt them. Yeah, it's not going to help. This is only going to inhibit their ability to do anything. But, uh, yeah. A cool drug, though. It looks like a drug straight out of the video game's Fallout. There's, a, it, I mean, it looks... They have had to have taken uh, some kind of, like, artistic. Because it looks... There's a drug in Fallout called Jet. But yeah. it's got, like... It looks just like... It's an in- inhaler, and it slows down time. It, it looks exactly like it, but th- they've had to have used that. But uh, should we talk about the, the last... the the finale, we always yeah. we always got brain. Of course. Finale. Great. This I talk about it again, something I talk about all the time. When you got a baddie, a ficking a real fucking bad guy, you gotta have an equal death. The you the do? death has to be to as equal it has to be at the death has to be as bad as that person is morally. Yes. Like a Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber is a dick the whole time. He right. gets thrown out the fucking window. <laughs> One of the most iconic scenes. Of course, yes. and I loved this scene when he fucking tosses her. He throws her so damn hard out that way. I, I, a little unnecessary. What is that. he? Uh, oh, he he asked her how she pleads, guilty or not guilty. And I love any other writer would have put some stupid, cheesy line for Ma to say. Yep. She doesn't say anything. Nope. And he goes, noted. <laughs> he just fucking throws the her out. Hardest. Gives her some slow-mo before, too. Oh, of course. You got it. Got to yeah. give her slow-mo. Well, he, she had the thing on her arm. She did. And then I love that scene, too, because you just... And she's such a great actress, too, because you just barely see it on her face of the, oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's not over the top. It's just a little bit when he says... Do you think that signal is going to pick up 100 or 200 stories? Through concrete. Through concrete. And she kind of gives just a little uh, tiny yeah. look. Just enough as a super villain. And, and then you kind of realize, he, yeah. oh, fuck, she's screwed. <laughs> yeah. And he, he knows shoots immediately. Her. Oh, he sh- yeah. yeah. And yeah. then fucking. I love that off. scene, just going back like 30 seconds when she puts the thing on mm-hmm. and she comes in with her hands up and then she like slowly puts them down. And then to signal all the bad guys yeah, that attack. Yeah, which just yeah. get killed immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Not very good henchmen. Not good shots. But uh, yeah, that, that finale scene is great. Uh, the, the scene when he has to fight the judges is fucking, because it's hand-to-hand, it's brilliant. When he slams that guy's head onto uh-huh. the bar, and it's his head just explodes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's why he's Dread. Of course. He's the he's the best of them. And best. I like the way they introduce those other four Dread uh, officers. Yeah. When they brought him in, and then they're like, open the door now. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense, because they've been trying to open the door all along. Right. And now new judges are coming. And now they're more forceful than these two dipshits who've been sitting outside the wall. Yeah. You know, the first time you watch this film, you think, oh, okay. And then they come in and immediately kill the the uh, the medic. Yeah, the guy who comes, no, no, it's not how well, I testify oh, you, to that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always Shoot. say no. No, always, always say no. Say no. I, I don't Especially know if it's a cop. Yeah, t- take advice from Joey Diaz. I don't know nothing. Who yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, I love it too. And it made it seem like those guys were fucking real badass. I mean, all the judges are obviously fucking badasses. Oh, for sure. But those guys, a million credits, man. That's all it takes. That's, That's not. That's all it takes to buy. And split in four ways too. That's what I cut. Was it a million each? No, because they say it in the film. He goes split four oh, ways. Yeah. And then one of them dies, dies and, and he, he goes, goes fine through. with me. Yeah. Because yeah. that doesn't seem like that great of. Uh, a price to try to kill Judge Dredd? <laughs> no, I'm a million each seems right. right. Yeah, but it's a, the same scenario with John Wick in uh, John Wick Three, I believe, when they're all after him. Yeah, because there's a giant hit on him. Split four ways. Yeah. Split three. Yeah, three it's, ways. Split two ways. Yeah, but 
I'm thinking I'm taking a million each on that one. Oh, uh, yeah. So Maybe. what are you getting? 250 credit? 250,000? Mm-hmm. I don't even know credits. what credits buy. Probably buys you like a, a Coke in this in these days. Yeah, with the inflation? Are you kidding me? Yeah. It might pay so, for a, a, yeah. a, a one month of rent. But uh, it must have been a lot because she was like, a million credits. That seems a little steep. He's like, yeah, but this is a, ju- a judge. That's, Listen, Brad, you're making a lot I of money a, off a, this. Slow great mail. fucking writing, too. When the, when he meets them early on and he already knows that they're, because they fucked up by not asking the girl. Yeah. He goes, what's the price these days on a judge's head? Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, it's so fucking cool. I love the scene, too, when uh, God, Dredge, cool. uh, Dredd gets shot. And then he's like, wait. He's like, I expected more from you, the legend, Judge Dredd. Yeah. I expected more, you coward. You know, basically. And then pop, 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 pop. He goes, that's what I was waiting yeah. for. <laughs> and there's so, all those guys, they have, like, names. And now even all the other buildings are names from, like, the writers of the, the show. And those those other judges are all in the comic. Mm-hmm. Like, they play bigger roles, obviously. Right, obviously. But but they're all, yeah, they're all in comic. There's, there's a ton of stuff like that, like, tilting their hats towards a comic. So if you were a fan, then I'm sure this was just, like, the greatest film of all time. Yeah. If you were a die, I mean, imagine... Very rarely are you a diehard fan of something, and then they end up going and making a film, and it ends up being good. Yeah, that you actually appreciate. <laughs> yeah, very, very rare. So imagine going and seeing me like, "Fuck, that was actually the dread movie I expected." I yeah, yep. never happens. No, but uh, this one just yeah, it's just something about it. Knocks it out of the park. Absolutely, it will. It will go down. I think as one of the one of the better uh, comic book films for sure. For sure, unquestionably. And I'm probably going to rewatch this again on Saturday because, uh, you know, Ken Dog, he loves action, hates sci fi, but this is more grounded yeah. sci fi, like realistic, where I think he's really going to enjoy it. Yeah, they definitely, in the comic books, there's actually aliens and robots yeah. on Earth and stuff. So they made it definitely great. Yeah, you, you should, I think for sure. I think Ken Dog will love Yes, one. I know my dad's seen this yeah. movie. He fucking loves it. But, all right, that's that's it. All righty. Well, recommend that is, it. A, yeah, absolutely. Highly recommend this, guys. Criminally underrated. Go see this film if you haven't yet. That is our review for Dread. If you guys like what you're seeing here, please be sure to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification as we drop videos here every single day. And if you guys want some heavy scene at merch like this uh, sweatshirt I'm wearing here. Wow. Look at that. thing is nice. Uh, you guys can find that link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and listening. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause. And until next time. Bye.